I feel like building a kit today. Wonder what I should do. Uh, gondolas, uh, nah. Structures, maybe. Probably not until I've got some more uh, landscaping done. Freight car people, nah. Oh, a flat car. That'll do nicely. So this is a kit that uh, Lifelike, uh, under their Proto 2000 series, built back in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and they built it under a bunch of different road names. This particular one is uh, Toronto Hamilton Buffalo, which uh, was a short line in in, well, in Toronto and Hamilton and down to Buffalo, New York, but Canadian short line. Um, this is the, they warn that this isn't exactly accurate for a real prototype. I don't care. The car itself is an accurate prototype, but th &B never had exactly this car, but I'm fine with that. Um, let's see what we got in the box. So this, uh, this kit is actually still available, not as a kit because Proto 2000 Life, or Lifelike doesn't have Proto 2000 anymore. They sold that wine off to uh, Walther's in, was it about 2005 or so apparently? Um, but I bought this one at a hobby shop in Winnipeg for 16 bucks a bunch of years ago, back when it was still in production. Um, these days, you can actually still get this car um, but not as a kit anymore. Um, Walther still produces it, and I, I think still in this road name. Um, maybe not, but definitely they do still produce the kit, the car itself, but in ready to run, and it's more expensive. You can still find the kit on eBay, um, but it's selling there since it's out of production. It's selling there for pretty much what it would cost you to buy the ready to run. That's a little sad. Building the kit is is a large part of the fun for me and I assume for a uh, number of you guys too So what do we have in the kit? We have the Bottom side uh, which is also the car weight and it has a looks like it's got a little bit of a bend to it Or maybe my desk does I don't know I'll have to try that against something straight the deck of the car is pre-weathered and that's that's how they came just factory pre-weathered it's got a bit of a warp to it maybe i can work some of that out then we have the frame itself um, with some pretty nice brake detail on it actually um, the brake tank and the valve and the cylinder and some of the levers and whatnot that's neat and the factory printing on the side that's pretty well done. When does this say that this... Uh, 1948 length, 52 foot 6. Okay. Oh, uh, new. Come on. Uh, yeah, 1949. Um, these cars were... Or cars like them were in use through my era, which is mid-70s. Um, let's look at the documentation that came with it. Um, yeah, built from 41 to 53. Well, this is the, the disclaimer for the specific TH and B. Um, okay. So, National Steel Car built similar looking cars, only a foot shorter. I don't care that much. Um, when it's in motion, it'll look great. Um... So, oh, standard instructions that came with all of these. These were very good instructions, and it shows how everything goes together, including the grab irons and whatnot, and the st stirrup steps. It even comes with KD couplers. No, it doesn't. KD compatible Proto 2000 couplers. Is that what it said in the box? Yeah, Proto 2000 magnetic knuckle couplers. There we go there. 
but they look almost identical to KD number fives and they even have the little springs so you could drop a KD in if you want I'm not going to these are pretty good couplers and the trucks that they come with I'm trying to lose the screws onto my workbench here or the floor they have nice metal wheels they run nice and smooth these are actually the wheels that I like to use anyway which again I don't think you can get any more I may be wrong but they're they're a nice weighted wheel they run smooth um, it does come with horn hook couplers if you actually want to use them but I don't I don't know many people that do so the other things that come in the kit are these detail bits um, let's just zoom in a little bit here put it right down in there so it's actually in focus so we have a piece that goes underneath this uh, underneath somewhere I think actually no wait a minute what is that yeah that uh, I guess that yeah that hides that center piece there and goes kind of there I think yep just uh, to hide the screws and nice riveted piece and then we have all the grab irons which are super duper fine and you can see against my finger we have a brake wheel we have part seven uh, I can't remember is that a brake lever um, oh there we go that's uh, the brake stem that the brake wheel goes on to and we have a brake valve um, there and the stirrup steps and the coupler boxes that's not a lot of parts this is as a highly detailed kit this is a very easy one to put together there's a few things that are going to be a little bit goofy like flattening this guy out I think I might just do it with it do it like that and then when I'm gluing it on I'll put some weight on it the weight itself it does look bent let me just find a straight edge here yeah it does have a bend to it that's cast metal so I can straighten that out relatively easily just like that um, I'm gonna take a little bit more care with it but that's that's already quite a lot better um, there's a little bit of tape goo on there which I'm gonna have to clean off with some alcohol uh, but let's get at it there's gonna be time lapses in here because I'm gonna be doing repetitive things um, this isn't a how-to this is just as usual you guys watching over my shoulder and despite my cavalier nature I'm going to do it pretty much in the order that they suggest here so glue the stirrup steps on the on the bottom first glue the grab irons on place the floor upside down uh, put the weight on and glue her down okay but I'm gonna spend a little bit more time flattening these guys out I'm gonna I'm just gonna do it off camera yeah that's not actually that bad Okay, that's annoying. Why is that happening in there? Well, it's just the tape goo has gotten down into the grooves. Hmm. That's going to need a little bit of paint, I think, just to blacken it up. Or maybe some black ink wash. This tissue paper that came in the kit with it. This isn't really something that anybody's going to see under normal operation. I just 
want it to go away. So what this is, is just black India ink mixed with alcohol as a wash. I use it mostly for weathering, but in things like places like this, it's going to work out as well. Just let that have a little bit of time. And then knock that off the surface. There we go. That's most of that white stuff gone. Enough that I'm willing to live with it. And just let that dry. Meanwhile, this is kind of straightening itself out out there. Um, but the fact that it's got that little bit of arch in the middle and the screws that hold it down to the weight. You know, it's going the wrong way. I'd rather have it bowed this way if it's going to be bowed at all. That way the screws will pull it down. Right now, it's going to sit up like that until I glue it. But I would like it a little bit flatter, so I'm just going to leave it sitting like that for a while. Um, and I might actually, well, no, if I had a heat gun, I might give it a little gentle heat. But I'm not sure if I want to do that. I might I'll just use the warmth of my hand. So I put a bit of a counter bend in it. This is just going to take some time to work out. I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to throw a hairdryer on it and soften the plastic too much. I just want it gently done here. Okay, while well that's uh, sitting there, uh, might as well get on with the uh, phase one. So glue four stirrup steps, these guys, to the body. Now then, there are actually six of them, which is nice. And they also have a lot more grab irons than you need. So I'll cut those off there. Um, just to make this a little bit easier to deal with, I'm just going to chop that sprue down so that I'm not having to fight with it. Now then, there's the four stirrup steps on there. You could use a pair of nippers like this, a pair of flush cutters, or they recommend using an X-Acto with number 11 blade. Or you could also use a nice sharp single edge razor blade to cut them off. Now, you might do it just like that and that would work. But I prefer to have a little bit of backing behind where I'm cutting. You notice on the back side of the sprue, of a lot of the sprues, there's a flat side. So, just put that flat side on something and that was the cut. I don't know if you heard it or not. And there it is. There's the stirrup. So now I'm just going to clean up. Zoom even further here. See there's a couple little notch uh, bits on there just from the sprue. You can either Clean it up just by scraping it off with your knife, or um, where are we here? Where's the other end? Or you can use a little file to just flatten that out on camera, preferably. There you go until it's nice and smooth. And how did I do on the other end with the knife? Well, that wasn't perfect. So a couple of shots with the file. There we go. Okay, now we'll put that onto the frame. There is the stirrup step. Um, it goes like that. And you see there's little notches to put it in there. Actually, yeah, I should do that one this way. So that will just sit into there. And then we get our model cement. Um, this is a liquid model cement, which is really nice because you can just put a little touch of it in there and it will wick in to the mating surfaces using capillary action. 
and it will dry fairly quickly. Not like that old squeeze tube stuff that the old timers in the crowd might remember being sold as model airplane cement. You can still buy that stuff. It's still thick and blobby. This though doesn't leave a big mess behind and it's already pretty much solid. Not perfect yet. It's not quite as fast as crazy glue or cyanoacrylate uh, super glue, but it's pretty quick and that's enough that it's going to stay put. So now I'll just repeat with the other four and then I'll come back. Okay, those have had a bit of time to, to dry. Now the eight grab irons. Those guys, which are on this sprue here. So again, we've got a flat side on there. So I can chop them off using exactly the same method. And again, I'll cut this sprue off just to make it easier to handle. And away we go. These sprues are a little tougher because they've actually got three attachment points, three gates, but just take your time. Get in there. And there it is somewhere down on the floor. Hang on. Yeah, that one's gone. Time to deploy an old jeweler's trick, apparently. Uh, jewelers, and they're working with super fine bits of gold and stuff that obviously they can't afford to lose would wear an apron that attaches to the front of their workbench so this is a variant on that that they've heard from some old modelers works pretty well i'm just using a piece of paper towel because i'm not wearing an apron but i'm taping it to the front of my workbench here and then I'll just kind of put a piece of tape on my belly to catch the other end of this. And I'll just show you in a second here. Okay. So there it is. So that hopefully should catch any wayward parts. Let's try this again. Two, and now the hard one, the tricky one, I guess. There we go. It's just barely still attached. We go, we go. There we go. Free. So there are a couple little tags on there, which I think this time I am going to just clean up with, with the knife. That side's very clean. Okay. Now then, these have a little kind of rivety bit. And how much closer can I get? Ooh, real close. Okay. So this pin here goes into a hole that's pre-drilled in the frame. And then that little drop angle and the grab is what is left standing off. There's the two holes that this thing goes into. So let's see if it'll fit. Can be a little bit finicky. Just take your time. Be patient. Sometimes, though, the holes aren't quite big enough. So we'll need to open them up. This tool is called a pin vise and it holds really tiny drill bits. So you go through your selection of really tiny drill bits. And 
you find one that is pretty much the size of your shaft there, or maybe a hair orger, and just open up the holes. And I'm not pushing, I'm just letting the weight of the tool do do the work and just spinning it in my fingertips here. So now then, uh, where's my tweezers? And my grab iron. And there it sits. Now then, the one of them, this end, goes right through. The other end, as I said, actually goes into the hole there. So now that I know it fits, and I'll lift it back out and put a little bit of glue on the tip of this one. Put him in. The other one. I'm going to glue from the back. I have to take it out of my, my helping hands here. This one I'm just gonna just gonna hand hold. Hopefully you can see it. And I'll just put a little drop of glue in the back. This side's never gonna be seen. And this stuff dries fairly clear anyway, and that should suck down into the hole there. And glue that guy in place. One. So there's four or there's Total eight of them that have to go on. One there, one there. Um, one here on the end, one here on the end. And then the same at the other end of the car. And I don't think I'm going to make you watch me do that in real time either. Okay, there's one end done. Now just move on to the other end. And there's the last one. Now, even though that glue doesn't take too long to get tacky, I'm going to let it get properly hard and um, go and have lunch and I'll come back in a while. Okay, time has passed. The glue has dried on all those pieces. Um, wait, remember I was mentioning that they give you a bunch of extra pieces of the grab irons and whatnot? That's one of the reasons why. So if you're being a little bit too much of a gorilla, then you can break them. The other reason, of course, you saw earlier when I pinged one off into Never Neverland. I, I still haven't found it. But that's okay. You need eight, they give you 12. So, next step is to get that out of the way. Let's see how my deck's doing back here. Okay, that's not too bad. But uh, I want a flat surface here. My cutting mat's kind of bubbled from years of abuse. So um, the traditional flat surface that modelers tend to use is a piece of glass. And if you got an, uh, an off cut of a marble countertop or ceramic or something like that, you could use that. I don't. What I do have is some old broken mirror tile. Ah, sorry. So there. Oh yeah, there's my there's my camera rig. Um ooh, this is gonna be hard on your eyes, isn't it? Somehow I managed to lose the next bit of video. What I did was uh, assemble the deck, then the weight, then the underframe as I'd described earlier and then glued around the edges uh, and then let it sit for a while while the glue dried. Also you'll notice that I put the mirror tile upside down so that it doesn't blind you. You can thank me in the comments. 
While it's drying, I'm going to prepare some of the parts for the next one, which is I'm going to need the coupler box covers and this uh, bottom sill, uh, the centerpiece. So just like before, let's chop them out of the sprues. This sprue doesn't really have a flat side to play with, so I'm just going to use my razor blade against the cutting mat and take it off. It's also not so tiny fine. I just made a mistake because I was talking instead of thinking. So I guess I can fix that mistake while we're waiting for the for this other piece to dry. The mistake is that I cut this piece off of here. Dignibbit. Well, nothing a bit of glue can't fix. You can't see what I'm doing there, can you? Put a little daub on there. Slide that guy into there. And what else do we need? Yeah, the coupler box leads. Let's see if I can do this without breaking anything further. These I'm not as concerned about precision on. They don't really have any decorative function. They just need to work. And I still will trim up the edges of my file a little bit. Just so they don't catch on anything. That's part of them working is they need to have a bit of a smooth surface for the guts of the cup where to not catch anything. Okay, now I really am going to just step aside and let things dry for a while. All right, I'm back. And as you can see, that glue that I wasn't concerned about earlier has actually seeped under there and has softened the plastic and lifted the paint off on the factory weathered deck. I was going to add more weathering on there. I'm less stressed about that. I didn't get any onto the paint on the side frames. Where the decoration is that's the important part okay i'm going to put a little bit more glue in here just between the top of the coupler pocket and the bottom of the deck and then i'm going to clamp it with a an expensive wooden clamp here hopefully that won't scuff the deck up too badly and Part of that's because I didn't get all the curl out of that like I was hoping to earlier. Let's grab a couple more clamps. And this doesn't look like it's sealed very well either. No, it didn't. So I'll get some more glue into there. And there. Well then. As an older car, um, this thing was built, what did I say? It says in uh, 1949 is what it says on the side frame. So in my 1970s fleet, it is going to be an older car, which means it is going to be heavily weathered. This is me making excuses for for my shoddy workmanship here, but I am going to heavily weather it. So, a lot of these sins are going to be hidden. I'm just going to go around and touch a, a wick a bit more glue into these places where it's popped up and clamp it and hold it for a while longer. So, nothing exciting is going to happen on that front. I'm just going to let it do that for a while and I'll get back to you. Okay, a little bit of time's passed, not too much. Um, 
that it just occurred to me that there were some other things that I could be doing while I'm waiting for that glue to dry. Clean these pieces up a little bit here. And I can glue that on because that needs to uh, that needs to be in place too. Now that is not working as well as I had hoped, but I'll just glue it onto there and we'll live with it. So there is a little lip underneath here. Okay, let me zoom you in so that you can see that. There's a little lip underneath there, which I'll be able to glue onto that. It just goes on like that. I'll be able to get a touch of glue underneath it. Into the ridge. That should wick down into that gap. And then for these pieces, Put a little bit more glue on that one that's damaged. Put some at the tip. Glue those guys at the tips there. And then hopefully that should all hold. Okay, well that's worked. More dollar store modeling tools. Okay. So I haven't ruined the deck any worse than it already is. I'll be fixing that in my weathering eventually anyway, so I'm not too stressed about that. A little bit of damage there from when I was trying to fix that in the first place, but that's attached, that's attached. All right. So now then, trucks and couplers. Um... I will be not using these horn hooks. Um, let's get this screw back here where I can get at it. I will be using these KD clones. What did Lifelight call them on their box again? Uh, Proto 2000 Magnetic Knuckle Couplers. Yeah, that's nice and generic. Okay. There's those guys and the two springs. That I think I've shown you guys installing this type of coupler before, the KD branded one specifically, but these go on just exactly the same way. Um, let me zoom in here. Okay. So the coupler box, um, the inside of the lid is nice and smooth. The outside has this little recess and a little bit of flash. I'm just going to clean off. Oh, I stand corrected. Um, that little boss there actually goes down over the pin. And that recess, I'm sorry, goes down over the pin. And it snaps in place just nicely. Making it so much easier than how I was doing it. Did I mention that it's been years since I put together one of these kits? Okay, that's on there, and it springs back and forth nicely. Same again this end. Screw it in. And it moves nicely too. Well, that was pretty easy. Okay, so all that's left to do now on the bottom is put the trucks on. And they're even easier. They just literally sit there and get screwed screwed on. You want to leave a little bit of rock, but not too much. It's just kind of a feel thing. Just so that it can go over 
bumpy track work without uh, derailing but not so floppy that the car tilts to one side um, a lot of guys like to do one a little bit tighter than the other um, the other truck was kind of loose I'll do this one a little bit tighter see he's only got a little bit of rock there now it still pivots nice um, where did my coupler height gauge go? There it is. Let's just adjust those coupler heights right now. So this coupler height gauge, I think I showed you in a previous video. Um, it's a Kitty branded item again. But basically, it has a coupler held at the right height. It clips onto the rails. And it... Uh, you The coupler should line up precisely with that and the trip pin should clear this little lip here or at worst just touch it so cut that down onto the rails there roll this guy in and now the tricky part for the camera pick that up that looks pretty much perfect right out of the box Let's try the other end. Again, that's just pretty much perfect. No adjustment needed. Nicely done Proto 2000 or the company formerly known as Proto 2000. The other thing that this gauge has it can uh, verify the the width of your track work with using those, of course. And then this little plunger here, it uh, it rides along in between the the ties, and if it hits something that's too high, it will pop up. As it sits, it's just nice and not nice and uh, level. But if it, hit something that's too high underneath you can see that pop up slick little tool really handy if you're uh, doing track work or building car kits all right there's one last thing there's putting in the uh the little bits of brake rigging here um the retainer valve and the brake wheel and Brake staff assembly. Which are the last bits on here. There's that brake retainer valve. And it goes right there. Yike. Okay, now this one I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cut it a little bit long, well, really long, back there, and back there, and then I'll sneak up on it. As soon as I pick it up off the floor. Okay, for this part, I've uh, re-established my cutting mat. I've taken the glass tile out just so that I have a surface that I can work against. Because holy hell is that thing tiny. Well, there he is. Um, I'm going to pick that up closer to my eyes and just do a little bit more cleaning on it before I plug it into the into its spot on the car here um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this so there I got it on that was a lot harder than I thought it would be it's not strictly necessary and when you apply the three foot rule, nobody's ever going to notice, right? But it's a good challenge and it's there. So we'll carry on. 
with the last two pieces. One being, let's zoom back in again. Why did I zoom out? One being the brake stem, one being the brake wheel. And again, I'm just, I'm going to take just several light passes here. That ends free. Now I'll hold that and make some light passes on there. There's multiple ways that you can free stuff. The bigger the thing, the more violent you can be, but with the small stuff, you kind of have to be a bit gentle. Now then the brake wheel itself, that's a really heavy sprue that it's in. But I think, make sure my blade's tight. I think if I'm careful, you can just make several light passes, nibbling away at the outside there. I think I can get it out without destroying it. Okay, one side's weak and one side's broken loose. I think behind it to back it up so it doesn't jump. There it is. Okay. Ta-da. But a little we drop of glue underneath that. I think one on there just for good measure. Yeah, to be honest, it'd be nice if it's that level. But then again, I'm going to go and do a little bit of research, I think, before I glue that on. I'm not sure if these high staff mounted brake wheels lasted until the 70s. Get up you um, because that I bet you in the real world those brake staffs Steve's staffs got knocked off quite frequently and damaged and were a real maintenance headache so I'm gonna just go and do some research and some pick find some pictures and I'll let the glue dry on on this Okay, bit of research has happened. Um, it's incredibly hard to find TH and B photos on the interweb, but I was able to find a CN flat car of about the area, the era that I model, um, which is uh, mid seventies ish, and it did indeed have uh, this type of brake wheel. And they had modified it to put the brake wheel down flush with the top of the, the flight car deck. And what they had done is, uh, it looks like this shaft uh, could slide straight down. So they could raise the wheel up or drop it down. Now on this one, I'm not going to go nearly as fancy. Partly because I don't know that I'm, I have the ability to do it partly because it's not necessary, but what I'm going to do is just snip that off pretty much flush and then put the brake wheel just down flush to the deck right into that position. All right, there's the brake wheel on and while I had it paused, I did decide to put that shaft on the end after all. I didn't drop it down quite as deep as the prototype did, but um, that's enough to hint at it anyway. So now that's a fully functional car. The only thing really you have to do is a bit of weathering on the top and I'm not going to do a heavy weather job on this one, at least not right now anyway. Um, I am going to use my black wash that I used earlier, which is, as I said, just 
drawing ink or India ink. Let me just reach through here. Uh, yeah. Oh, in this case, it's translucent ink black um, mixed with some alcohol. And that, being a thin wash, just settles down into the cracks. Um, because I'm using a translucent ink, it's uh, not as... Uh, what's the word? Not as uh, heavy duty as a straight drawing ink. Um, it's not going to leave quite as much black behind. And it's not going to cover up the paint. And a wash doesn't cover up paint anyway. It just drops into the holes. Um, which in this case are the board holes, which you can't see for the glare. But there are nail holes suggested at on this on this uh, car deck here and there are also um, all the cracks between the boards. Now then, if I, how can I make that visible to you? There you go. And there it is. Uh, completed for now anyway, until I decide to do some weathering. Uh, completed and in its natural habitat. Since the prototype photo that I got uh, had a couple of automobiles of the era on it, I figured I'd do the same. But of course, being a flat car, general freight car, you can put whatever load you want on it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.